And now Taylor Shire doing the same thing, but he's not here at the golf course. He's in the Queen City covering last night's big Rough Riders win 30-23 over the Toronto Organized. Hey, Taylor, thanks for the time. Leader Post columnist and writer. Uh, we talked with this with Jim Barker about it last hour. Last night, Riders that good or Argos that bad? What did you see from your vantage point? I'm going to say uh, Argos that bad, but, you know, credit to the Riders' defense for forcing uh, many of those turnovers. I think that was the, really the story of the game was the five turnovers, four interceptions uh, that the Riders forced on Cameron Dukes, although he sort of made a couple of bad throws in there. So I think it's a little bit of both. Uh, it would be the easy answer. Um, really, though, if you ask me after the first quarter, I, the Argos played unbelievable to start the game. Shea Patterson had, I think, one completion and one first down through the first quarter they were bringing the blitz on every play so I think really with the story of the game was Shea Patterson getting settled in and Mark Mueller making the adjustments with the play calling I don't think they really threw over over 20 yards uh, after the first quarter so the the adjusted play calling uh, the adjustments by the riders as a whole uh, I think really led to that victory um yeah, and like I said, after the first quarter, it was uh, it was not the storyline that I was expecting uh, the way it ended up uh, finishing. Uh, well, listen, I was at the Warriors Alumni Golf. I didn't turn it on until late in the second quarter, so I didn't see any of what you're talking about. To be honest, I mostly saw rider domination over the second half. But let me ask you this. Shea Patterson, right after the game, did credit Mark Mueller, the offensive coordinator, for the adjustments in-game. Who else did afterwards? You were at the you know, post-game media availability. Who else was talking about Mueller? I think Corey Mace mentioned Mueller. There's a lot of players, uh, you know, Sam Emelis as well. Like, Mark Mueller does deserve a lot of the credit. He's not the guy, obviously, that we're going to talk to uh, right after a win, but we're kind of, even last week heading in, I talked to him about some of the adjustments that he would have to make with Shea Patterson taking over for Trevor Harris. Obviously, different quarterbacks, but he really said the system is essentially the same. He can just do a little bit something differently not necessarily more but just something differently and we you know men shake can create plays with his legs and we saw that on the touchdown run um so he just has to Mueller just has to work towards Shea's game by allowing him to run when he has the chance or when his second or third read isn't available uh, but really I I think it was those short throws Toronto was bringing the blitz so Saskatchewan responded with short throws small hitch passes even the touchdown to Sam Emelis was a what five yard six yard completion and MLS did the rest, 34 yards. So, uh, yeah, like I said, uh, Mark Mueller, I think, deserves kind of a shout-out, uh, maybe a, a game ball for, for some of the adjustments that the offense was able to make. I think it's just funny. You've been covering sports around there for a long time. We all knew Mark Mueller was capable of this. We know he's one of the greatest offensive minds in the game, just football overall. And when people said he was only hired because his grandfather's Ron Lancaster, not only would it not bother him, he'd laugh. People just don't know what they're talking about. But you know what? There's a lot of those around. Um, let me ask you this. 4-0 start. It's been a dream. I, I'll be for the Riders. I mean, I would say the first couple of games, you could say the opposition gave it to them. Fourth quarter implosions, not here now. We're at a point now where this is a really good football team, Taylor. How far do you think it goes? It's a good question, and I, I, I don't think we really know. But one thing is, is clear. They're... They're undefeated, but they're not perfect. This is not a, a perfect football team that's running away with wins. Um, you know, their starting quarterback is now injured, so can Shea Patterson be that answer? I mean, we saw a, sort of a similar thing in 2019. With, it was earlier, but when Caleros got hurt, Cody Fajardo sort of took the team on his shoulders. So how long is Trevor Harris out? Can Shea Patterson go on a, you know, continue this, uh, this strong run to the start of the season that they've had? I think obviously that'll all be answered. Um, but if you ask me what, I think the season's going to look like. I think, uh, obviously, I, I don't think they're going to go undefeated. I think there'll be some blips. They have a really tough test in BC next week. I think there'll be some blips here and there, but they really have the foundation for a strong team, a sense of belief. There's hope. All of those things that you need, some of those intangibles, they have the skill, they have the right people, and now you need that belief, that buy in, that, that will. And I, I think this team does have it. So uh, I, I think. You know, good things are going to happen for this team this year. I don't know if they'll win the Great Cup necessarily, but um, but they're certainly going to be a playoff team based on what I've seen so far, and, and I think they're going to make some noise. Thank you for the analysis, and for all those writing in, I will get to 
uh, your comments later because I want to switch topics here. Just Marshall writing in from Winnipeg says, I agree with you. I love games on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Don't change it. Do you have a quick thought on that? I love the CFLs doing this in the summer. It's been two or three years of doing it. A game every night, primetime TV. That's just me. The viewers seem to agree. Do you? Yeah, I uh, I agree with it. It gives me something to watch on, on any given night, to, right? And I think that's really what you want. It's not all crammed into... You're not having to watch a triple header on a Saturday, which nobody really can sit around. Uh, I mean, you can, but uh, you don't really want to sit around uh, for nine hours on a Saturday and and be parked in front of the TV. So I like the the Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's obviously going to change come September when the NFL season uh, rolls around. Uh, they're not going to play any more Sunday games. I, I don't even think there's any more Thursday games. So it will change. Uh, but for now, I certainly like it. Although I know some teams have had issues. I don't think the riders have had issues, but there's been a few short weeks where a team is playing on a Saturday and again on a, on a Thursday, I think the riders have one of those coming up where they have to go to Montreal on a Thursday after playing. Um, I believe it's Winnipeg the week prior. It's in a few weeks now. So that's going to be a short week. They're going to go there on, on, on four days. So I think if you ask the players and the coaches, they don't really love the Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but from a, a fan watching perspective, I think it's great. Okay, so to what I really wanted to talk to you about, I'm not joking, is Jessica Campbell. Because the last time you were on, the notion came out that Rokenville's Jessica Campbell was to join the Seattle Kraken. It wasn't made official till this week that Rokenville's Jessica Campbell will be the first female assistant coach in the National Hockey League on the bench. You know her. She's from your hometown. Tell us about Jessica Campbell, please. Yeah, just an outstanding hire. And really, she's an outstanding person. And, um, you know, going back to, to seeing, watching her grow up, uh, I was a few years older than her. So uh, she actually, I think, AP'd with our novice or Adam team one year and and didn't look out of place, uh, you know, even though she was three, three years younger. But um, just an outstanding person. Uh, and even growing up, you could tell she kind of had that it factor and something special about her. Uh, she was a great hockey player. Uh, you know, obviously playing against the boys back in Rokenville, she was she was the best player out on the ice, and and eventually she went to moved to Melville to play AAA girls hockey there. And and but even leading up to that, you could see that she had something special. She went on to uh, play for the Canadian national team, obviously a great career at Cornell, and and then she came back and and you know once she was done her playing career, she developed that power skating. Um, you know, sort of business. And I, that really took off. And, and obviously she was in Kelowna for a little bit training. She, uh, you know, guys like Brent Seabrook, but then she actually came back to Rokenville, taught the course and kind of gave back to the, the, the community there, just sort of the goodness of her, of her heart. Cause that's the type of person that she is. So um, to see her get this opportunity now, uh, you know, I think everybody in Rokenville is proud of her surrounding area, Saskatchewan as a whole Canada. I, and I think women's hockey in general. So there's a number of layers to, to the people that can that can get a sense of pride, uh, you know, for for this historic hire, and it, like I said, just a, just a remarkable person and a, and a great family. I love the comments. I've never met her, but let me ask you this: Would she is she the type that would be uncomfortable with the notoriety that's come along with this? Like she probably just wants to get to work. She's a hockey coach. Is that how she would look at that, or how would she look at this? Or or be real proud of being a trailblazer because that's a super big deal. Yeah, I think I think that's twofold. I, I think she's proud, and, and she has said in some of the interviews that she's proud to be the first, but I think what she is most proud of is that this will open the door, and she will open the door for others to now walk through it and, and others to be hired. So so I think that's what she'll take uh, the most pride in. But, yes, she did say in a couple of her interviews, and, and you know, knowing her a little bit, she wants to get to work. She's going to put her head down. It's not about being the first female. It's about being the best coach. And, and I think, uh, you know, like I said uh, a couple of weeks ago or months ago when we were talking, if you look at her resume, she's the right coach for a team like this. And, and you know, she has all the, you know, female, whatever it is, female, male, it doesn't matter. Look at her resume. She's absolutely qualified for this role. And I think she'll do a great job. Awesome job. Well, you're doing a fine job, man. I love your coverage. Thank you, Taylor. Uh, enjoy the weekend and can't wait to chat again. Hope to see you this summer. All right. Talk to you soon, Roddy.